Welcome back to Aussie Throttle Jockeys. Had a successful track day in the last video. This time we're back on to get my shed sorted. Now I've just dragged in all these boxes. They've got some cabinets in them. At the moment, all my tools are all out all over the place. So it is time to give them a home. Stick with me, start the time lapse. Hopefully we get some cabinets in this. Don't have much time today, so this might be a multi-day operation, but let's start the time lapse and see how we go. Okay, so that's it. I've got these two cabinets assembled. They're from a company called G Tools, the local to Perth. Actually, I think they've got some places over east as well. All soft closed drawers. Got shelves up there. Actually, you've got to put some shelves inside here still. Get that sorted in a bit. Everything's keyed, everything's on rollers. So if I want to move these things around, I can move them around. Now all that's left is to get my junk pile into the cabinets and then that'll be that. Okay, I've just spent the day cleaning up. This place is looking great now. So time to actually put it to use. We're gonna get this thing ready to go to Collie. Okay, here we go. Oil change, check the front brake pads, see if they're all good. Um, I'll rip the tank out, just have a quick look, make sure that everything's good. Um, make sure there's no oil leaks or anything. We did previously have an oil leak out of the top of the valve cover. So I just wanna make sure that there's none of that coming out anymore. I did re-tap that. It's fine now, it sits perfectly where it's supposed to sit. So I'll just double check, make sure it's all good and Good to load this thing up. Okay, let's have a look at my oil. Doesn't look the right color, but that's because it's still got some uh, running lube in it. But there's no sparkles in there, so 
that's all good to go. We'll get rid of that and get some new fresh stuff in there. Next thing, brake pads. Always keep an eye on these. They do these pads because there's four of them instead of two. Look at that. Occasionally, one or two will start to wear a little bit unevenly compared with the rest. So I usually carry a couple of spares. Sometimes I'll chuck that spare in because one will be three quarter worn and the others will only be half worn. So as long as they're all the same pads, I figure I'm getting the same amount of friction. Here's the other side. Again, still good to go. I'll keep my spare pads around just because one of those is a little bit more worn than the rest. Yeah, after the first day on the track, I'll have a look at them all again. I might end up replacing that one. Okay, oil's changed. You do go through a lot of oil with these bikes. Um, about every, well, about three ride days, really. If you get for three full days out of it, change it. At that point, it's not that the oil's degraded, it's that it's picking up like metal particulate in it from sustained high revs. You don't usually get that on a road bike. So, so yeah, every three days, get rid of that metal particulate, look after your engine. Oil is really cheap insurance on these engines. These things only last five, 6,000 kilometers and then they need a full rebuild. And this one's just had one. So this has only had two days on that oil, um, but I've got a two day track day coming up. So I don't want to be trying my oil down there. So rather than have that fourth day where I know my oil is contaminated, I'm changing it now. It's, as I said, cheap insurance, keeps your engine lasting a lot longer than if you were giving it five, six, seven days between oil changes. So also don't forget, just because the oil sight glass says it's full, start up your bike, make sure that that oil's gone through the engine and then have a look at it. You may have to put a little bit more in. Okay, we'll give that a minute, get those brakes assembled and double check that window and then we're good to go. And if we have a look down here, I'm not sure if you can see in there, but in that valley next to the starter motor is where the oil was pulling when I had the oil leak. That's not there anymore, so we're good to go. And the other thing I've got to do while I'm here is route my cable for my lap timer. Funny story with this lap timer, it does have a GPS system embedded in it. So does my dash. But for some reason, something up here creates some electrical interference and neither of them work from up here. So you have to run a remote antenna. So. If you've got a lap timer and for some reason it's not picking up your GPS location Yeah, you might need to run an external antenna because if there is any sort of RF interference there It ain't gonna work GPS signals are very weak. So easy to block Left it on charge, did have some starting issues the other day, probably because I started it a lot without charging it and not running it for very long times. Um, lap timer's on charge. I'm definitely gonna be running lap timer this time. I want to get fast at Collie or fast enough. Um, the plan is to race this in four weeks time from now. 
and I haven't raced since the last video that I did on racing, which I think was two years ago. So, yeah, I've got a bit of work ahead of me. Back onto the shed. Didn't realize I had handles for these. You get them installed. Okay, here we are all loaded up and ready to go. I'm gonna do something a bit different on these two track days. and be trying some Pirellis. I haven't used Pirellis in ages. I've been running Dunlops for a very long time, but got a set of Pirellis at a good price. So let's have a look at them, see what the difference is. Anyway, keep following. Um, we'll see you in the next video. The next video will be the two days down at Collie. See you in the next one. Keep it pinned.